So I'm Beth Orcutt. I'm not going to stand back here. <clears throat> uh, and I was asked to talk about this collection that it represents a synthesis of the work that's happened over many decades with many, many of the people in this room and many of our colleagues who couldn't be with us today, and talk about also where I see this leading some of the research into the future. Um, so I am greatly honored to have been part of producing Deep Carbon Past to Present. Um, and I love this background image, um, which made the cover of our book, um, and was uh, in large part thanks to Josh Wood for helping us with that. And I want to definitely credit uh, Rajdeep uh, Dasgupta and Isabel Danielle, who are my partners in crime as the major editors of this book, as well as Marie Edmonds um, and Darlene True Christ for helping as well. Um, and we also need to thank the partners that made this happen, in particular the Sloan Foundation, who supported making sure that this book is open access so that the discoveries that have come from this community are accessible to everyone, everywhere, all the time. Um, and due to their support, this is possible with Cambridge University Press. Um, and I think that's a, a major accomplishment for this community. I also want to thank the 127 authors that contributed to this work. Um, and I wanted to emphasize, because we've heard again and again in this conference, the importance of our early career scientists in driving what we do and shaping how we think about the research that we're getting. And they were major contributors um, to this effort. So you'll see here um, that two thirds of the authors of this volume were either early, very early career students uh, up to mid career scientists. And I think that's a great um, reflection of the enthusiasm for this science moving into the next decade. I also am very indebted to the lead authors of all the chapters. This work would not have been possible without your effort working with your co-authors to bring this together. Um, and I'm very thankful for all the work that you've done. Um, one of the things that I'm so excited about with this book is that it does provide a great framework for bringing the science into the classroom and also talking about the new discoveries that have uh, occurred. And so I use this graphic from the uh, Cinti Lee et al. chapter, where there are great graphics and summaries that kind of set the stage for the important science um, that's come out of uh, our work and building on the work that came before the DCO. There's also many highlights in this book that we've heard about throughout this conference. Some of the new discoveries um, uh, that are in the press release that came out yesterday at the start of this meeting, for instance, related to uh, really changing our understanding of where carbon exists in Earth and how our carbon uh, came to be in this planet. Um, we've heard a lot about the amazing work that's been enabled by research on diamonds. Um, and this is a central part of this book as well. There are several chapters related to the science that's um, uh, really groundbreaking in terms of our understanding of uh, uh, deep earth processes. We've also heard a lot about the incredible synthesis that's been possible by the concerted effort of scientists in our community to really understand gas uh, emissions um, from volcano volcanoes as well as diffuse emissions and coming up with great syntheses that really will come into the classroom very easily to understand where are these sources, how do we quantify them, how do they connect together, and also emphasizing the new discoveries and how this can shape what we do in the future. We've heard about this already. I don't want to reemphasize this too much, but these new real-time indicators of uh, volcanic processes that are going to have real-world implications for how societies interact with our environment. And I wanted to emphasize that this chapter in particular has a lot of supplemental data associated with it. Um, and uh, on the back of the book, it leads you to the link to find it. We are working with the editors, uh, the, the uh, publisher, to make sure it's well linked in the uh, PDFs online. Um, but I think this is another great testament to this community to wanting to make this data available and open access. Um, and so I wanted to make sure everybody here knew about that. Um, we heard yesterday about some of the great discoveries uh, that have been made recently about um, uh, abiotic organic synthesis, uh, methane synthesis, et cetera, and how we're studying that. Again, chapters in this book reflecting on that and how we're understanding how fluids interacting with rocks are, are involved in these processes. Um, and then the highlight I want to end on is related to the chapters in the book related to the deep biosphere, because it's near and near to my heart. This is the, the community that I am in. 
Um, and there's a summary graphic in the Cara Magna Bosco et al. chapter, and she is here. Uh, she wasn't um, when we talked about her yesterday. Um, uh, but emphasizing, again, this fact that Mitch brought up yesterday, that there is a lot of life in the deep subsurface. Um, when you compare it to the amount of uh, microbial biomass, or prokaryotes, uh, biomass on Earth. And so if we want to understand life on Earth, we have to understand these types of ecosystems. And I highlighted here the logos of several programs that have been involved in generating the data sets that now enable these models to happen. Um, one of the most important of which the, being the International Ocean Discovery Program for allowing us to access marine systems, the International Continental Drilling Program uh, for accessing the continents, um, as well as the CW Scientific Program that um, is a partner with the deep life community in enabling this kind of work. And if you'll allow me to diverge off of the book for a moment and talk about the science I'm most excited about um, coming in the next decade is related to getting a better understanding of the deep biosphere and how massive it is. Because what I want to emphasize is that many of these models that have come out in the last few um, five or so years have either focused on refining the marine sediment estimate or the continental estimate, which is a big part of Kara's work, but we really don't yet have a good handle on the biomass and the deep biosphere and ocean crust. And I think this is a great horizon for the future to get at this. And there are several scientists in this room that are involved in this work, um, and I'm excited about where it's going. And really looking into these ocean crust systems where you have uh, mineral alteration happening, you have the precipitation of carbonates, uh, calcites, et cetera, what are the roles that microbes are playing in these ecosystems? Are they speeding up these processes? Can we take advantage of those processes for carbon capture and sequestration? Do we need to worry about them for those kinds of issues? Um, how does this affect the amount of carbon that's being subducted? All of these kinds of questions, I think we need to understand the life in these systems. And to do that, especially in the ocean crust environment, we have to have tools like the ocean drilling program and the vessels that are part of it. So what I'm showing you here is the Joides Resolution, which has been oh, the workhorse of getting this ocean crust research accomplished. Um, this boat will not be around forever. <laughs> and so as a scientific community, if we want to understand these processes, now is the time to be thinking about what are those next scientific questions we want to answer to justify that we need to continue to have assets like this into the future. Um, and so I encourage any of you that are interested in this conversation to um, uh, follow what the community of scientists that are working on drafting the next science plan for the Scientific Ocean Drilling Program, raise your voice. Let us know what, uh, so I'm a, a member of that working group. Um, I'm happy to hear what you have to say, but you can also go online and see what's already being developed. There's been many workshops, many reports, um, and I think this is really a key part of continuing deep carbon science into the future for marine research in particular, but how that also builds into these global uh, data sets that we need to understand these systems. And I'll end with, again, highlighting how important the study of these deep biosphere systems is as we look to the heavens and think about the fact that there might be life on other bodies, and especially in these ocean crust systems where you have fluid rock interactions, these are the kinds of places we're going to be looking at in the near future with um, potential emissions to Europa, um, and especially understanding the subsurface is important, because if there's life on Mars now, <laughs> or the signatures of it, it's probably in the subsurface. Um, and so these, uh, to me, are the horizons that are the most exciting for the next decade. And with that, I think I'm done. <laughs>